welcome to this week's episode of Let's Talk About Fantastic Beasts. Today we are going to be talking about flobberworms. Now as always, I'm going to be using my copy of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, so let's get straight on. Flobberworm, Ministry of Magic classification 1X, which means boring. <laughs> The flobberworm lives in damp ditches. A thick brown worm reaching up to 10 inches in length, the flobberworm moves very little. One end is indistinguishable from the other, both producing the mucus from which its name is derived and which is sometimes used to thicken potions. The flobberworm's preferred food is lettuce, though it will eat almost any, vegeta uh, any vegetation. And that's all the book says. Contrary to the claims of Draco Malfoy and his gang, which were designed to attack Hagrid and his quality as a professor, although he was doing a pretty good job of that himself, flobberworms do not have teeth and do not bite. Flobberworms are apparently edible, and flobberworm fritters are sometimes served for lunch at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, much to the dismay of the student body. The flobberworm was notable for being one of the few living creatures capable of being summoned with the summoning charm. After losing his nerve during the Hippogriff debacle in his first Care of Magical Creatures lesson during the 1993-1994 to school year, Rubius Hagrid had his third year students raise flobberworms for a term. The exercise was completely pointless as they prefer to be left alone and do nothing. They didn't require much care, although they seemed unable to control how much food they needed, as they will die if overfed. For the student's final exam, they simply had to monitor a flobberworm and make sure it was alive at the end of the hour appointed for the lesson. Flobberworm mucus is green and sticky and is used to thicken potions. Flobberworm mucus is a vital ingredient in the Wigan World potion. In the book Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, Snape's detention for Harry includes scraping flobberworm mucus off the desks. In the film adaptation of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, Peter Brettigrew offered to have himself turn into a flobberworm while begging Sirius and Remus not to hand him over to the Dementors, which is ironic as his name is Wormtail. In the PC version of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, flobberworm mucus is used as an ingredient to the Wigan Wild potion, which will give stamina to the player in both the console games and the PC games. You are able to use flobberworm mucus in potions on Pottermore. In the Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone video game, PC version, Snape sends Harry into the dungeons to fetch various ingredients to create Wigan Wild potion. Flobberworm mucus is one of them. Showing remarkable continuity, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince video game has Harry actually create the potion itself in the Potions Club using the, exactly the same ingredients that Snape listed in the first video game. Despite not being mammals, flobberworms are apparently capable of perspiring. So, we've never actually seen a flobberworm in the films. Apparently there's a newspaper article, which I've never quite... I've never actually seen. I can't remember seeing that. Now... This is the point where we say where we see a flobberworm in Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. Well, normally at this part I say, you never know because there's going to be three films. Well, actually, guys, if you can't tell, I'm very excited. There is now going to be five Fantastic Beasts and where to find them films, which in my opinion means we need Fantastic Beasts to span five films. Now, when it comes to flobberworms, I personally would say we won't see one because I think it would be pretty pointless because they don't do anything, so they won't move the plot along. However, we haven't seen a flobberworm in the films, Harry Potter, so if they chose to do one in Fantastic Beasts, then they could create a whole new design and all that kind of stuff. It would be nice to see one for the first time, which is what I always say when we haven't seen a creature yet. However, in the ter in the case of a flobberworm, it does not move the plot along at all. So, I would say probably not, but like I say, you never know. So next we usually talk about the history. Now, flobberworms were created entirely for Harry Potter, as far as my knowledge goes. So there is no history, and they're not really mentioned much in Harry Potter anyway. And the last section is, uh, is there any merchandise for flobberworms? And the answer in my opinion, is no. I don't think I've ever seen any merchandise for a flobberworm. There's certainly not a plushie, a teddy. There's certainly not one of those. And I personally don't think I've ever seen anything to do with a flobberworm. That's it for this week. So again, it's quite a short episode. Some episodes will be longer than others. In the case of next week, next week's should be quite lengthy. 
uh, because next week's Let's Talk About Fantastic Beasts is on basilisks. Now, basilisks were not created entirely for Harry Potter and they do have mythology and history behind them, so we will be delving into that a little bit. So that's it for Flobber Worms. That's it for this week. Thank you very much for watching. Next week, like I say, we'll be on basilisks. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if you like this kind of thing. And I will see you next Sunday with another Let's Talk About Fantastic Beasts. Bye-bye.